Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Brian Heater. I'm I, Sarah Silbert. Wait, I'm not Brian Heater, am I? You, you aren't. Am I? You're, I mean... I'm, Morphing slowly but surely, is that what's happening? I mean, that's probably what he would look like in glasses, like huge transformation. Uh, No, sadly, I'm Terrence O'Brien. Brian Heater could not be here tonight. He has better things to do, like eat dinner and sleep. Sadly. Yeah. Um, Sarah, we are here for one thing and one thing only, and what is that? That is Best of CES Awards, my baby for the last however many hours that I've been awake. (laughs) (laughs) Well, far beyond that, your baby for the last... I don't know, at least six months, I'd say? Yeah, that's probably accurate. Yeah, I, it's you, been a long time coming. You, you've been slaving over this, basically. It's eaten up a large chunk oh, of your time. Oh, yes, slaving. But uh, it's been fun, and it's really exciting to see them live on the site now, and obviously everyone is excited about that. He's won. He's one of the finalist nominations. Um, because you've been taking care of this, though, like me, you probably have not seen much of the floor. No, I have not. <laughs> this is my first time at LVCC today. I've been in the trailer been catching up on sleep a little this morning. Yeah, yeah. Which, which clearly makes us the two most qualified people to discuss all of the products that are nominated. Um, but, you know, yeah. whatever. You people yeah, get well, what you get, well, all right? We, we have Deal people we it. trust that we're farming this out to, so, you know. Um, this is the, the award itself right here, right? Yes, it's 3D printed. It, it's, it it's pretty sweet. It is the new Engadget logo. <laughs> it is I'll, I'll, t- I'll talk while you, you, you do the whole demonstration. You open this thing up and We've got the little logo design on the inside, and you know, it's a logo. That's about all I could say about that. And around the back, the best way to predict—I can't read. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely quote. It, it is actually a lot a going really, on there. It's a, really a lovely cool. thing. I do enjoy this quite a bit. Um, so, let's not waste any time. Let's yeah, let's, let's just get right into it. Let's jump right to it. What is our first category? We are starting with startups. Starting with startups, we're going right through the order on the website, on our post, and the first nomination for finalist is FinSix. They make a tiny little AC adapter, so instead of having to carry around your super large laptop charger, it's just this very small little thing that you can pack in your bag instead. So I do have one question about this. Um, I am not particularly familiar with it, but... There are about, I don't know, 37,000 different laptop uh, plugs in the world. What, how does this attach? What is, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand how this one works. Wow, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough question to put to you, maybe we... <laughs> yeah, this is, this is one that Richard Lai um, picked for us. He's our startup guy, at okay. least for this week. But um, I think it's more powerful is what makes it stand out. It's from this really cool startup that's from MIT grad, so that's pretty cool. And, you know, the MIT guys, they're always spitting out you awesome, awesome them, stuff. You can trust them, obviously. Yeah, I trust them. Yeah. And then the second one is this wireless HDMI dongle, which really is convenient because you can port anything on your laptop screen to another screen, be it a monitor, TV. It's wireless. So that's cool. And it's been really successful in Indiegogo. It, it has. It's made, what, $500,000 or something in the, in like the pledges? Like way over its initial funding. So goal. I do have one question about this one as well. Wow. Uh, what makes this different from every other wireless dongle? I mean, I mean there, there's a thousand and one wireless HD things out there, a thousand and one wireless HDMI, and you know, we have Chromecast. I, what, what is it that makes this one stand out so much? Why, it's, why is this getting five hundred thousand dollars? It's the convenience. It's super small. It's the convenience of being able to port it to more things than just a Chromecast, which is very specific in what sort of streaming you can get. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, though, CES is not really a hotbed of startups. Yeah, that's the thing. Eureka Park is very big, and there's some stuff going on there that's pretty neat, but a lot of it is very forward-looking. So we're going to see maybe the beginnings of some great things to come, but not the products themselves. Right Which here. means they are ineligible for best for, of CES. Yes, the Sadly. rules. Come with products next time, guys, like actual things, so that we can have more than two finalists for the startup category. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eureka Park is cool. I think people should definitely check it out. Startups are becoming a bigger thing every year at CES, so definitely worth it for at least seeing what's going on and the people behind those things. But what's up next? On to digital health, and this is a product where category where we had no shortage of things. The first is the LG LifeBand Touch. 
and that is... It is a wearable. Wait, wait, wait. Y you can keep talking. We're going to play a little game every time we say wearable or Internet of Things at home. Uh, take a shot. Yeah, Internet of Things is the best CES drinking game. How many times have you heard that today? It's insane. So, <laughs> so the LG LifeBand Touch is the company's first wearable. As you know, there's so many wearables out there right now. This one is kind of sleeker looking than a lot of the other ones. It has a um, swipeable OLED display on it. Um, I like the way it looks. And it also has some smartwatch features. So it's an activity tracker, but it also will give you notifications when you have update, like messages and stuff like that. So it's kind of a nice blend of the two. OK, take your shot. Um, <laughs> there was no shortage of wearables, though. Um, and as a disclaimer, what we have to say about each of these products isn't necessarily indicative of who is going to win. We are but two of the, I don't know, two dozen votes we're going to get. Yeah. Um, there are many, many people deciding this, so yeah. don't so, take our word for it necessarily. I find the next finalist much more interesting and a little bit bizarre. Oh, me too. I mean, I'm really excited about this idea of sensors going beyond someone that you have to strap on your wrist. I mean, this is the Sleep Number X12 smart bed. It has sensors in it that will tell you all sorts of information about how well you're sleeping. And I just think it's pretty cool that it's in your bed. Yeah, you don't have to fall asleep wearing something bulky on your wrist that's not very good at telling you how well you're sleeping anyway. Absolutely. But it also has this really amazing feature called Partner Snore. Which, yes. <laughs> if your partner is snoring, you can press somehow this button or some feature that will lift up their head and hopefully make them stop snoring. And I mean, there's utility there, obviously. Yeah. I, I, when I first heard about this, I was like, I kind of want to be the person who reviews this. I want to have, and by the way, it is an $8,000 bed. Just so everybody is aware of that, $8,000. I want to be the guy who reviews the $8,000 bed until I heard about that feature and realized that I would probably wake up every morning sitting straight up. Yeah, that you would not benefit exactly <laughs> Yeah, it would be terrible. That. I'd have terrible neck pain and back pain yeah. every day. I'm sure it's a really good bed, though. Sleep number beds are good yeah. beds, so probably worth the money if you are into And that. our other two finalists, also wearables. Yes. Drink. <laughs> so are you going to talk about these two, then? Um, the um, Razer. Oh. Razer's on here a lot, actually. Sneak peek there. Spoiler. Yeah, so this is the Razer Nabu. Um, yet another smartwatch slash fitness tracker. But what, what makes this one sort of interesting and different is it doesn't just have a screen. It has two screens. So you get the initial notification on the smaller screen on the front side. And then if you decide you want to acknowledge the alert and get more info, you flip your wrist over, and there's a larger screen on the inside so you can read the full text message or the, uh, well, I assume not the full email. That seems like that would probably be quite difficult on a screen either. Right, but, but more information than you'd get on just a single small screen. Yeah, it, it, it honestly it seems a little gimmicky, but yeah. it's still pretty neat. Yeah, I mean, it's like the LG One in that it combines smartwatch and activity tracker features. It's a little more sporty looking, so maybe it doesn't have that sleek aspect to it, but it has more screens, yeah. which is cool if you are information crazy. Yeah, it does have that distinctly razor look about it, though, yes. which uh, is not for everybody. Um, you know, it's got bright green inside lining, exactly. and you're still going to be able to see that even when you're wearing it. It's going to be peeking out. So why don't you tell us about the last one, because I know oh, that you've seen this I do. Um, recently. Yeah, I'm giving things away, but I'm casting my vote for this, probably. Um, for best of CES? Uh, for this particular okay. category, I think so. Um, it's, it's the Jaybird Rain. Um, and as a guy who's reviewed a lot of fit, fitness trackers and wearables for the site, um, and I should take a drink, but I'll finish talking first, uh, this actually addresses a lot of the concerns and sort of the irritations that I have with the wearables and fitness tracking thing in general in that it's basically automatic. Everything is done for you. I don't have to tell it when I'm going to go exercise. I don't have to tell it when I'm going to go to bed. It knows when I'm running. It knows when I'm walking. It knows when I'm sleeping. It knows if I'm swimming. And it will know if I'm cycling. It can tell the difference between all of these things automatically, which is amazing. That's really impressive, especially for something like swimming. I'd really want to test that out and see how that w well that works. Yeah, and then in addition to that, it monitors, you know, how active you are during the day, and you know, sort of gets an idea of what your ideal amount of sleep is, 
Um, and if you don't get your ideal amount of sleep one night, it will send you an alert and tell you how much more sleep you should get that day to make up for it. I would love that. I would use that as an excuse all the time. Like, I need to sleep right now. Yeah. I'm not going out. I, I, watch told me. I'm pretty sure, though, uh, it would get really annoying really quick during CES because every day the notification yeah, would be it like... it would just be sad at that point. Yeah, I it's think. like, you normally need like six and a half, but today you should probably get like 15. Yeah, that'd be a sort of tease. It's like, you can't have this, but you should. It's also two pieces, right? Yes, um, it's sort of clasps together uh, with magnets, although it doesn't really tie it rely entirely on the magnets, that just kind of holds it in place. There's two little clasps inside, which makes it a lot easier to get off and also makes it a lot thinner because you're not dealing with uh, you know, an actual band like a watch band and a uh, normal clasp and that sort of thing. So it's, it's, and it's crazy soft. Yeah. It, it's, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's just, it's bizarre. It doesn't feel how it looks. It doesn't feel like other fitness trackers. Hmm. It's Sounds not like you're going to get this. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a stiff piece of plastic. Yeah. I, I'm super intrigued by this. I want one. So it's a Jaybird Rain $200. Yeah, which is a little pricey, but... Seems like it's good quality, though. Yeah. It definitely stood out to a lot of people at Engadget, so definitely a top contender there. Moving on to automotive. I don't believe you or I are the top auto people at Engadget, but uh, no. let's, let's pretend we drive cars in New York. Um, well, I mean... This. At a previous job, I was the top automotive guy at the site based purely on the fact that I owned a car. That, I mean, that, apparently that qualified me to be the auto In side. New York, that absolutely <laughs> would qualify. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but we'll do our best anyway. Yeah. What's the first one? So the first is BMW Activist Assist, which is basically a very advanced um, system to prevent accidents. So if you're hydroplaning, it will take control of the car. You don't have to do anything. It will um, ideally get you back in control. This, this is the uh, crazy one that everybody's been super excited about, right? Because it not only, it's not just an autonomous driving car or whatever, it will drift. And I, I, I don't know how much I trust a robot to drift my car, but people were really excited about this. This, this is a thing that got everybody, not just us, like, well, not us necessarily, but yeah. people at the site really excited. The self-driving car concept is definitely exciting. And apparently self-drifting is particularly. Self-drifting even better. Yeah. Next, this is pretty crazy. I feel like I can't fully appreciate how awesome this is, but it's been conveyed to me. The Corvette Performance Data Recorder. It's basically a ton of information about how well you're doing if you're racing. It gives you all the sets you could ever want when you're on a track. I don't really know who this is made for. I can think of maybe two people I know, but yeah. it's awesome how in-depth it is. One of those people being somebody who guest spotted on our podcast last night, yes. former editor-in-chief Tim Stevens, mm -hmm. who was singing its praises, uh, I think about as loudly as he could and hoping that anybody would hear him, while me and several other people stared at him blankly. And we're just like, I don't know. But yeah, it apparently, it, it, it turns driving into a video game, more or less. It just captures all sorts of information. I don't know why you'd need it if you're just driving around the neighborhood to go to the store. Yeah. Which, and they're putting it in a production model car. Right. Is the thing. So it's going to be in the 2015 Mustang, I believe, or something like that. I think that. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, or no, no, no. Corvette, no. Corvette, Corvette. 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 I don't know. There's, there's something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but it has an overlay of your location and your speed and all of that information over a Bing map. So pretty cool. Now, I've been told that that should probably win by people who know what the deal is. But I'm not going to lie. I like the next one better. This is awesome. This Tell is the, the Cobra Jump Pack. I wanted to make sure I got that yeah, right. Yeah, Jump Pack, Jump Pack. Yeah, Jump Pack. With one P to sound um, look yeah, better. Yeah, it lets you jumpstart your car, which you know isn't a crazy thing. There's been you know portable things to jumpstart your car yeah. forever. But it is super tiny. Like, normally those things look like small generators. Right. They're, you know, this tall and yeah. they, they have this all sorts of... Yeah, this is wallet size. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy, crazy thing. It's hard to do it justice uh, by simply talking about it right. or even showing it. It's, it's, it's the sort of thing you can stash in a glove box and will save you in an emergency should you get stuck on the side it of the road It costs $130. It has enough power to jumpstart you a few times, I think. Like yeah. It's, Pretty, that's pretty cool. That's something I, mean, I want in my car. Yeah. 
Like that's a, that's that's if a you useful. You have a car. Thing. I think that's the most useful one of these finalists here. And then lastly, we have the Hyundai Blue Link, which I won't lie, I don't know anything about. It's some more in car tech. In car tech here, it's basically advanced navigation. Um, Verizon has the cell signal in there. Um, it costs a hundred dollars extra. Why? Oh, I thought you were drinking. I was wondering what the new word no, was. No, 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 no. Sorry, I was taking so, a little bit of water to uh, cut okay. the whiskey. Fair enough. So it's $100 per year for this navigation service, but apparently it's really good. So it's, it, it's kind of like OnStar? It Is seems like it, but, but more advanced and with Verizon providing the connectivity. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, I guess that makes sense. I, I, I won't lie, I never quite got the point of OnStar, but... It's come in useful a few times. Yeah. I think actually last year at CES, I remember being in the car with Zach calling them several times, and they're super nice, and it works. Okay, so, so. You, you, have a, you have had experience with it, whereas I have not. Yeah. And, and, and it was largely pleasant and useful. It was completely pleasant and, and useful. And this is a better version of that. Yes. Okay. So some utility there for sure. We're moving on to audio, which is another trick or tricky category for Terrence and I because we have about three people on staff who are so hardcore audiophiles, and the rest of us take their word for it. Yeah, do we even have that many? Like two and a half, we have James Yeah, I was gonna say Billy. James True, uh, oh, I guess, yeah, Billy. Yeah. Billy would probably be the half, I, I'd yeah. say. No offense, Maybe Billy. Maybe like you John, and Brian create the other. I, I was gonna say John Tory. John Tory yeah, kinda knows his true. audio stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and the first, Nominee is Astel and Kern, um, their AK240 personal media player. This is basically just like a crazy high-end like iPod, more or less. Yes, um, like thousands of dollars. Yeah, how much do, do we have a price we on that? We don't have the okay. price on here, but it's at least $2,000. At, at least $2,000. Yeah. Why don't you look up the price real quick, and I'll ramble inanely about it. Um, I mean, it, it's... It's one of these things that if you're not a crazy audio guy, it's hard to understand why anybody would buy this. Uh, if you're familiar with Virtu, the uh, cell phone brand, they make uh, you know, absurdly high-end phones that cost many, many thousands of dollars. And up until recently, they weren't even smartphones, they were dumb phones. Uh, and this is basically the, pers the, the personal audio equivalent of that. Uh, you know, it, it has dual uh, digital audio processors inside, um, and it has this really crazy, weird design and like a carbon fiber back. Do we do we have a price? Not finding a price, which okay. is probably a sign that it's very expensive. That means that literally nobody here can afford it, unless there happen to be any CEOs in the crowd. Yeah, Are they there want any you CEOs to love it first crowd? and then no? discover cool. All right. how much it costs. No yeah. CEOs want to join us. John Legere isn't hanging back there. Yeah, we have an open invitation to John Legere, if you know him. Yeah, um, I, I, I sent him a tweet today. Guys. I told him to come hang out. I promised that he could crash the podcast. I wouldn't throw him off. He has at least, as of yet, not taken me up on it. I won't lie, I'm a little hurt. Yeah, we even told him that Macklemore was here, so he yeah. must be really well, busy. That, we lied to him about that, though. I don't know. I, I know I feel a little bit bad. He might. We're trying to trick him. Yeah, we, well, <laughs> he'd be happy once he was here. Yeah. All right, moving on, we have the <laughs> LG sound plate. This is a very thin sound bar that has a 3D Blu-ray player built in, and it goes right under your TV. It's really sleek looking. The real standout feature here is the Blu-ray player. Yeah? Yeah. I'll have to take your word for it. I will, I will, yeah. this, this is one and that- it looks it, really cool. It, it's kind of self-explanatory, yeah. and without seeing it, we don't have one to show you, so it doesn't really do as much good, but trust us, it's worth it. It's yeah, fine. but this new sound plate thing, the idea of having it right under, just as a kind of stand for your TV, Yeah, it's neat. And, and, and the whole idea with that is that you're able to get deeper, uh, deeper, better sound yeah. by extending, as opposed to the normal thin sound bar. And it also looks a little bit better. Yeah. More integrated design. Yeah. And then we got the Samsung HW H600. That just rolls off the tongue. That's yeah. a wonderful name. Bravo, Samsung. All you need to know is that it's another sound bar. It doesn't have a Blu-ray player built in, but I think it looks even better. Does it? it I won't lie. From the photo we've put up on the site, it is kind it of hard to tell. Kind of looks like a vacuum. Yeah, it does a little bit. <laughs> and the, the last one is the Clearview Clio, if I can see that. It's very hard yes. from this angle. This is pretty much a see-through speaker, and the technology it uses basically distribute sound in a 360 degree um, space. So wherever you are in a room, 
you can hear it at an equally good level. And it's also see-through, which is pretty neat. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty awesome. Yeah. Again, maybe a little gimmicky doing the see-through thing, but that's pretty sweet. It looks really cool. Yeah, and the 360-degree really cool. sound thing is actually kind of useful. Yeah. You don't have to worry about where you're positioning speakers when you invite people to come over and have an in impromptu dance party. Yeah, yeah for a party, for a big room, a small room You're always room in even, an ideal location. Exactly. Uh, th the next category is the best video product. Um, this is mostly TVs, I believe. Yeah, yeah. it's almost completely TVs. Uh, and I can just preface this by saying that one of the coolest <laughs> things I think at this show are the curved TVs that can switch between being flat and curved. Those are pretty awesome. And also addresses one of the things that I never quite got about the curved TVs, which is while they might look cool, they're kind of impractical if you have more than like two or three people sitting immediately in front of the television dead center. Right. You know, so you don't always need them to be curved. Yeah. And I, mean, and I get it that you know, when you get particularly big, if you get, you know, a 110-inch TV, there, there's going to be some you know, loss of fidelity at the edges of the screen, right. even if you're sitting dead center, because that's, it's going to be at an off angle, because it's just so huge. And right. the, the idea of curving it, I guess, is to minimize that. Right, to improve viewing angles. But if you're sitting slightly left of center, then you, you are missing probably a portion of the screen. And this solves that by flattening out. Yes. And there was more than one of those. Yes. Let's go a little bit out of order here. Let's get yeah, crazy. Let's, okay. So, yeah, so only one of those made our list, though. Yes. That was LG. Samsung had one, and that was maybe, maybe a more memorable announcement because that was the whole Michael Bay walking off stage press conference. Yes. To kind of be a tie-in to the Transformer TV. But anyway, so Samsung had its own that at a, the push of a button would transform between flat and curved. But we actually like LG's version better because it's OLED, so better quality display. Samsung hasn't announced what theirs is, but it um, seems to be LCD. Yeah. So. Uh, do they have OLED TVs even? I actually don't know. Yeah, I believe they do. Okay. I, Richard yeah. Lawler would be the person yeah. to ask that anyway. So many people we should have here. Yeah, I know. We, should, we probably should have just had them all line up off stage and come on. That probably would have been much they better. They were just really comfy in the trailer. Rather than listening to Food my monotone to voice there. and rambling about how I don't know anything. Oh, come on. Don't <laughs> sell yourself short. All right, so let's go back to the top here, though. Yeah, so this is the only non-TV thing. And I actually yes. am not a TV owner, so I can't speak a ton to this. But it basically, the Dish Virtual Joey replaces hardware. It's an app on your smart TV that basically gives you the functionality of a set-top box. It delivers. DVR content, live TV. Which Am is, I getting that right? Yeah, that's I mean, and that's that's great because who needs another piece of hardware in their house? This yeah. gets rid of one more set of cables, gets rid of one more ugly piece of equipment that sits, you know, in your TV bench. Yeah, I'm all for the trend of streamlining how much equipment you need in your home theater. It looks a lot better. It's less of a headache. And so it gives you enough room to squeeze good. that gigantic Xbox One in there. Exactly. Yeah. You have to prioritize. And then it's back to TVs. And then it's back to TVs. <laughs> and Richard Lawler, um, our main HD guy, really liked um, the new Sharp Aquos Quatron Plus line, um, which is basically a lot cheaper than the company's 4K lineup. It starts at about $3,000. $3, um, still very good quality display. Yeah. That basically That's explains all that. There That's is all to there say is to that. There. And um, then Similarly, last? the Samsung 78-inch U9000 is, it's curved. It doesn't transform, but it is curved. Then I don't care. It's UHD. <laughs> it's curved. Come on, Terrence. No, it's crazy. It's I demand crazy all of my TVs care. transform from now yeah. on. Yeah. It's I like want no non-moving TVs. Curved is kind of not a big deal. It's crazy. <laughs> all right. Well, another, <laughs> another category with not a lot of things at CES, yeah. and that's software. And it's interesting because the picks for this category are things that could fit in other categories yeah. as well. Let's, let's go slightly out of order here, too. Okay. And let's start with the Sony PlayStation now. Let's start. Um, this is you know, a, a streaming gaming service. It was formerly Gaikai, which exactly. is the, the company Sony, Sony bought. Um, you know, there, there's, there's still a lot of details to find out about it. 
but it sounds like they're trying to expand their gaming platform across all sorts of devices and, you know, I'm, I have no problem interrupting Ryan the wave. Ryan Peter distracted us. You might as well. Yeah, bye. Oh, okay. um, uh, <coughs> I, I got a, I have an important appointment. Uh, I need to go watch Darren Murphy to Hamburger oh, okay. over at uh, Vince Neal's Grill. <laughs> That is clearly much more important than that. Heater out. W w would you like to join us for a quick drink before you leave? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, you can join us for a quick drink while I talk about the Sony PlayStation now. I, it, and again, this is a thing that's getting rid of hardware and getting rid of you know streamlining your living room home entertainment system. Right, which so you don't need a PlayStation S4. Let's get rid of the living so room. Yeah. Why? Why do, we need the, why do we need a living room? Well, we'll we'll get to that at some point. I, this that's is the Sony window wall. I yeah, think. that thing. Um, and then the only other nominee, the only other thing we could think of that was even worth considering for software, was WebOS. LG's WebOS for TVs. So this this, this is a new startup. This is like the yeah. new kid on the mobile yeah. OS block. Exactly. <laughs> This is, this is cool. This no, is I what we, we want. We, we, we all love WebOS. We miss it dearly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when, it, when, it was, when it first won a uh, Best of CES award back in 2009? What? Oh. Yeah. That recently? Yeah. By the that way, how the will anyone ever know what kind of liquor this is with um, the label covered like that? I know. I, I, we actually had it in a paper bag. But yeah. We were, we were being cl trying to be classy. This is Las Vegas. Yeah. You just, <laughs> just drink anywhere as long as it has a black black uh, tape over the label. Well, well, we figured they don't really like the whole branding thing. You yeah. know, you got to be careful about that sort of stuff. It's, make, it's Maker's Mark. Yeah. Delicious Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. Um, anybody? Wes on TVs. Yeah. You can keep talking about that. I'm going to take a drink now. Wes on TVs? Uh, okay, so I, I, I am trying to figure out, I mean, Android is a very, uh, a very scalable, flexible operating system. People are used to the UI. They've got it on their other devices. Surely if you want your, uh, your, your tablet or your smartphone to interact well with your, uh, your smart television, maybe it makes sense to have Android on both of those devices. Yep. But why not WebOS? Here's what I'll say. <laughs> okay. Well, for other than the reasons that I just said, why yeah. not WebOS? Uh, here's what I'll say. I, I, I'm now living with television. Yes, yes, for, you for are. For the first time in you, you, probably you've joined the a uh, 20th century finally. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like I've inherited it like an in-law. There is a television. Yeah. In my apartment, uh, it was a a smart television. Are you familiar with this class of device? Uh, I've, I've heard of it before. Yeah. Uh, it is a smart television that is impossible to navigate through <laughs> because you need you need a remote control. Yep. You need a, and you need to type using a remote control, which is pretty much the most painful thing in the world. Uh, we 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 got a Chromecast as you do because it's thirty five dollars and they're amazing and they're amazing. Which I, I decided this year, by the way, that's something that's going to have to be in my uh, travel bag from now on. Like that's a thing that I need to buy a Chromecast to take with me to the hotel and to bring to CES so that I can stop watching Netflix on my Here's the thing, laptop Terrence. at some point. At some point, you've taken it too far. A and I say that because <laughs> I've got a hand blender in my hotel room not right now so I can juice in the morning. You've got a humidifier. Yes. Uh, I got this little UV light that clips to the top of my... Well, well, I Where do you stop? Where does it stop, Terrence? Where does it all stop? I, well, I mean, come on. The Chromecast is this big. And to be fair, I have the humidifier because I have to be on this stage and I wouldn't have a voice by now if it wasn't for that. Do you need to drink more delicious Kentucky bourbon? I know. That will also do no damage to my voice whatsoever. So why? Well, oh, give you a good whiskey voice, cigarettes and uh, cigarettes and bourbon. Yeah. So we, you, it sounds like you're not super confident about the choice of this uh, WebOS TV. Uh, not that I'm not super confident. I just think it's a little strange that um, WebOS, which has been more or less dead for the last you know year at yeah. least officially, <laughs> and officially dead yeah. for the okay. last year. But I think um, it's found its new platform is the thing here, is that it works well on a TV. And it does, and that's why it made it, because okay. it's, it's, it's well, actually how, impressive. How so? How so? Like what, what, and and it, is it doing things that Android couldn't do? I, I think that the thing here is that the interface is simpler to navigate, and that it has all of your options for getting content in a more accessible place. So it's really just about the user experience, which obviously can make or break. Smart TV experience, Brian. Guys, curved 4K touchscreen television, CES 2015, be there. 
I will, unfortunately. I, I will have no option but to. I may or may not. It's <laughs> really, at this point, it's, it's hard Who to knows? say where, where I'll be in a year. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Godspeed with the rest of the podcast. Later. I'll see you guys. Let's can I have a burger with Vince Neil and Darren. Yeah, enjoy that. Bye, Brian. Let's keep moving. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Let's keep this thing moving. All right. Best emerging tech. This, we had a ton of stuff for, actually. Yes. Interestingly, because it's another category where things could go under different classifications, but that's kind of the nature of where technology is going, and there's so many different categories and applications for these things. Yeah. And, you know, our, our first finalist is probably the one I'm most excited about. But it does feel a little bit like cheating, I won't lie, because it's been around for a while now, at least in some form. And that's the new Oculus Rift. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's improved significantly. Significantly that's improved. why it's made the cut. Yeah. Really. So, and... You know, the, the thing is, I'm starting to wonder if and when they're going to actually come out with a consumer-ready product. I I'm, think this is the year. You I think mean, this is yeah. the year? I, I hope so. Um, I didn't get to try the original version. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to play with it until I was at E3 uh, this year, and I got a chance to play with the improved HD version. And it was one of the craziest experiences of my life. It's absurd. Yeah, can we back up for a second and explain actually what Oculus Rift is? Okay, so Oculus Rift is a wearable VR headset, essentially, and you know, it looks and sounds very much like the sort of stuff that was supposed to be cutting edge in the wave of the future back in you know the mid-late 90s, the plot of Lawnmower Man. And the difference is, this actually works, for one. It senses your head movement, and it turns the camera, and you know they, they have a whole bunch of demos. I think somebody hooked it up to Skyrim, right. because that's what people do. Yeah. Um, and then at E3, they made it in HD, and now for CES, they've swapped out the original screens for regular LCD screens for OLEDs, exactly. and they're in HD. And they've added infrared sensors to it, so it doesn't just sense your head turning, it can sense movement and tilting so that if you shift your whole body like this, it'll still know to move your perspective. So it's a full body experience as opposed to just the yeah. head. Despite the fact that you're still wearing it on your head. Yeah. Which is, which is crazy, and it's good. And if people here have not used it before, you need to. It's, it's seriously disorienting and just bizarre and amazing and terrifying. Yeah, the only downside, I think, is um, maybe getting a little nauseous. It's something you have to get used to, for sure. Yeah, um, I only used it for a couple of minutes. I didn't get nauseous when I used it, but it was very disorienting after doing the demo for, like, three or four minutes and then taking it off and realizing I was in a small, like, six-by-six six room in a convention center that was put up with, like, you know, movable walls. Yeah. It, it threw me for a loop. Uh, the next one is the Intel Edison chip, which this is, this is the one geared towards wearables, right? Right. It's basically a tiny computer about the size of an SD, oh, you're keeping up, uh, an SD card, and it's meant um, to power wearables. And Intel is really um, at the forefront of this movement. It came up with this whole nursery 2.0 concept of devices that can let parents know when their baby's milk is warm, for example. Um, the temperature of them when it's embedded in their clothing, um, things like that. So wearables. Are, I'm, just I'm, I'm not taking times. that one. Yeah. Keep going. Um, I need to be yeah. able to stand up at the end of this podcast. Yeah, they're definitely a huge trend here, and not so much that they're new, as in they're becoming wearable in a different way. And I think that Intel is really one of the prime examples of that. And you know, this is also an indication, though, that it's becoming much more mainstream, that Intel feels the need to get into this space, that they're embracing it, that they're making their own wearable chip built for wearables. They clearly think that this is an industry that's going to grow, yes. which, to be fair, is something we were questioning last year and I was questioning earlier today. So right. they clearly disagree with me, where I think that you know it's probably not going to grow that much more. I think it's kind of a niche thing for the most part. But 
they're investing in it, so we'll probably see a ton yeah. more stuff. And then you're gonna have more Intel Inside logos all over yeah, you. Yeah, maybe they'll prove us wrong and that this is something we absolutely need in our lives. So the last one is another display, another head-mounted display, but not a VR headset. Right, it's not really a competitor to the Oculus Rift because it's actually projecting images onto your retina. Yeah, this is like a crazy sci-fi version yeah. of those Sony headsets that they've been selling for a while, the, the cinema thing, whatever, that nobody bought because they were crazy and stupid. Yeah, I'm not sure how many people will buy this, but I think it's a really awesome concept. I mean, Yeah, and it's, we, it's, we should probably yeah. actually mention the name of the product, by the way. Oh, I did. Did, did we? I not? No, I, I, I didn't so. in my head. Avagant Glyph. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. It's made by a group, um, I guess someone on the team is an MIT scientist, um, another group of people who know what they're doing. It's really cool. Um, several of us in New York have tried it out ourselves. It's I was not one of those. No. But I can tell you that it was disorienting and also very awesome. There's a pair of headphones built in, and they're very good headphones, so that's an another use, I guess. Yeah. It does kind of just look like a pair of headphones, though, which kind of throws me for a loop. I mean, I'm yeah. sure the quality is very good, but when you look at them, it kind of looks like somebody took a high-end pair, pair of headphones and instead of wearing the band on the top of their head, put it over their eyes. Uh, sort of like if you were a six-year-old shooting your own episode of Star Trek and wanted to play Geordi, that would be how you made your visor. Right. So, I mean, good for them. Yeah, I mean, it's really meant for watching movies, not for yeah. playing games. So it's, it's in its own category, but it's, it's neat. It's it, it, it is one of those things, though, that I don't... I, you know, when Sony did it, I didn't quite understand what you would use it for, and I won't lie, I still don't quite get what you'd use that for. Um, I suppose it would make sense on a plane. That's pretty bulky to bring on a plane, though. It's, it's kind thing. of bulky, but where else would you want to sit and be completely unaware of your surroundings while watching a movie? I mean, like, you don't want to get on a train or a bus and do that, because you want to know yeah. when you got to get off at your stop. It's also not very discreet. Yeah. So, it's very Somebody obvious that you're Somebody would rob you. Out. Yeah. And I think if I sat in my living room across from my wife wearing that, she'd probably get really upset with me. Yeah. At least for the first week, she'd like, you know, shoot vines of her like doing terrible things to me while I can't see her. And then eventually she'd get super irritated yeah. and probably divorce me. Yeah, so, <laughs> so Terrence is not voting for this, yeah, obviously. No. That's how I feel. Okay, next up is best mobile technology. Um, the first one we have here is the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. It has the S Pen that you know from previous Galaxy Notes on a much bigger screen. The biggest Android tablet that Samsung has, in fact, um, with some improved features as well. You can have four windows at once, which is pretty cool productivity-wise. Um, they have a new magazine interface, which divides your in experience, basically, into three different columns based on what type of apps you're using. Who is this for, though? <sighs> Who is the note for is a question I have in general, <laughs> though. I mean, it's meant for productivity, and this is called the Note Pro, so I think it has this whole <laughs> professional image in mind, and I get that it's bigger. It can fit more on the screen, which could be useful. And, but it really still has that focus on creativity, I think, with the Note, yeah. the, with yeah. the S Pen, so. I mean, I just, I that's don't know who's gonna wanna carry around a 12.2 inch tablet. Yeah, I don't think this is something that's really, which is interesting why it's in mobile. Yeah. Because it's not the most mobile, but as opposed to taking a computer around with you, a laptop, it's definitely lighter and thinner than that. Yeah. So it, it's a good compromise, I guess. And from extremely large to, you know, relatively small for tablets, at least. Yeah. We have the Lenovo ThinkPad 8. Yeah, it's Lenovo's second eight-inch Windows tablet, and everyone on staff really likes this tablet, actually. Um, it's just a really well-built device. Yeah, I, I was a big fan of the, the first eight-inch one they did quite a bit. Yeah. And I haven't gotten a chance to play this with this one yet. Um, I have faith in Lenovo, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they didn't screw it up. Have you played with it, though? Yeah, it it's runs really well. It has a quad-core processor. It's well-made. It has an aluminum body. It's just a well-made device. And if you want a portable tablet running Windows 8, it's your go-to device, I would think. It's definitely the best in that category. Yeah. And then lastly, we have the only phone, right? Yeah. I mean, this is not a phone show, which I think some people yeah. don't realize. There and was basically zero phones announced. Yeah. 
Yeah, but, but this is Sony's Xperia Z1 Compact, which is basically a smaller version of the Xperia Z1, which was its flagship phone for a while this last year. But it's what Brad really liked about it, he's our main mobile guy, is that it's not a watered down version. It has all of the features you'd want and that you had on the bigger version, just in a smaller form factor. So it didn't really sacrifice on specs. Okay, let's be a little bit more specific. How big was the Z1? No I idea. Know. How big is this know. guy? This guy is about. Stop it. Does Terrence. anybody out there know how big the Z1 bad. was? <laughs> it's five inches. Okay. So it's this one is, I'm guessing, four something. It's, it's, it's one of those things that's not a phone anymore. At five inches, it's not a phone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I have nothing to say about that one. I won't lie. It's 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 it, the the mobile category. Um, wasn't particularly exciting at CES this year. It, it never is. I think that it's not really exciting at any trade show anymore because yeah. companies have their own events to, yeah. launch, to launch their big product. And it's, it's, it's also kind of be become, uh, you know, very vanilla. Everything's the same at this point. The only thing that's differentiating anything is the brand skin. Um, yeah. Everybody has their giant phone. Everybody has their smaller phone. Samsung has 37 tablets for in every shape and size. Yeah. Um, but I did feel like this year there was a lot less tablet and phone uh, announcements than in past years, even if this wasn't always a primarily mobile show. Right. And I just realized that there's the a emphasis. pinball machine over there and got really excited. What is happening? Yeah. Um, sorry, <laughs> got distracted. Let's move on to gaming. Another nice. one, did, did we, we did, uh, nominate the Oculus Rift for this one again. Also the PlayStation Now. Software also the PlayStation Now. So we've already covered two of our nominees for this category. Um, if you have any questions about those things, you can shout them out, but we, I'm pretty sure we covered that already. So let's, let's talk um, the Project Christine from Razer first. Right, so this is pretty crazy. It's this modular computing experience. It's a prototype right now, but basically it's all these different modules that you can customize depending on what you're doing in yeah. terms of gaming. Without and it looks crazy. It's hard to explain yeah, how it, cool it is. It looks, I don't even know. It, it's, it's, it looks like drawers, like an, an open, and you just pull these pieces out and you slide them in. And you know, just to say that it's modular and you can swap pieces in and out doesn't do it justice because you can do that with any PC, basically. Right. But this, you don't have to crack open a case. You don't have to mess with a screwdriver. You just pull it out. Put in a new card. Yeah, it's very user friendly. It's meant to be customized in that yeah. sense. Yeah, uh, it is, however, probably going to be crazy expensive, as most Razer stuff is. Yep. But that's fine. Their you know customer base is perfectly willing to pay absurd amounts of money. Yeah, for I mean, and at least they get that standard um, Razer black and green look. So yeah. Which once again, if you're a fan of that, this over. is for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I expect nothing less from the company that sells empty PC cases for over $1,000. This I'm kind of excited about, but also slightly confused by. The Valve Steam Machines? Yes. Yeah. Ben Gilbert, we're not, where are you when we need you? Well, well, here's the thing. I'm not confused about what they are or how they work. It's why you would want them? It's n I, kind of. I mean, they're essentially gaming PCs for all intents and purposes, at least right. the first generation. What's separating a Valve Steam Machine from any other computer you buy from iBuyPower or CyberPower PC or any other terribly named company that makes things with windows and LED lights and water-cooled GPUs right. is that it runs a version of Linux customized by Valve that doesn't support all of the games that you can buy on Steam because it's Linux. And it still costs you $600. So it's another sort of very specific target audience. Yes, but what I will say is the controller is interesting, which is part of the deal. It's not a Steam machine if it doesn't have the controller. Um, and for those who have not seen it, it doesn't look like any gaming controller you've ever used before. There aren't joysticks on it. It has these two circular touch pads instead of analog sticks. And in the middle, eventually, will be a giant touch screen. At the, uh, at the prototype stage, it's four buttons, I believe, which looks a little weird. Um, 
but I'm also kind of excited to see them, you know, simplifying PC gaming a little bit and turning it into a more of a console experience. Um, I think Steam sees the writing on the wall and that the standard desktop PC is quickly becoming a thing of the past. Right. Uh, basically, the only people who own desktop PCs anymore are gamers. And I don't think that that's enough of a market, the, the enthusiast PC gamer, to keep a company of, you know, these companies afloat. So they're trying to make a console that is also a PC. And it's sort of a weird and interesting thing. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to see where this goes. And Do I'll you be think anyone but gamers would buy something like this, though? That's the thing I'm not sure about. I don't necessarily think they will for the first generation. And here's one of the places where Steam, uh, Valve has an advantage, is that because it's basically an off-the-shelf PC running their custom OS, they can iterate much, much faster than any of the consoles. So, you know, Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, it's gonna take them years and years of R&D to come out with the next PlayStation or the next Xbox. In six months' time, Valve can say, this is the new minimum requirements for a Steam PC, and there will be a cheaper, you know, more powerful Steam machine out there, and it'll still run all the same software. You'd have more or less a console experience. And yeah, I, th I think it's a slightly odd move, one that seems initially sort of strange, but also kind of smart. I, I'm, I'm intrigued by this. I'm gonna build one at some point. Uh. I think it could also be an issue of marketing. I'm sure they could present it in a way that would be appealing to more people than just yeah. hardcore gamers. The fun, the fun category, the fun category, my category. Yes. Best the offbeat, offbeat The offbeat, which is a name that means really next to nothing. It just, this it is. It sounds a little negative, I have to say. It offbeat, does a little it's bit. It's like you don't fit in anywhere. You're like an outcast. It, it's, it's where we stick the things that we have no idea what else to do with them. Uh, we've got an Engadget editor wandering over there. Do you want to join us, James True? Yeah, we have we mics. have plenty of mics. Um, so yeah, this is basically where we stick all Hello. of the stuff that doesn't belong anywhere else. It's not a video product. It's not a gaming product. Are we talking offbeat? Yeah, we're talking offbeat. So you wanna you wanna talk about Mother real quick? That's I, our first. I nominee. don't know. It's because I don't really know what it is. I don't think anybody like really it. knows what it is. Because it's <laughs> kind of like the creepiest thing. It is horrifying. Um, but also amazing. I mean, it's called Mother. Right. Let's and just start there. Yeah, and it looks dead inside because it, right, it is. Right, those sort of light up like yeah. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's going to tell you something, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it uses these sensors, which they call cookies, because your mother is going to give you cookies. I don't know. The terminology here is really weird. But these sensors Slightly creepy, slightly... Very creepy. ...registered sex offender sounding. Yeah. It also, the mother looks like a plastic Russian doll, kind of, um, with a face on it. Yes. But anyway, you use these <laughs> sensors, you place them on different things, and then you can get alerts, like where your baby is, location-related things, if someone's moved something when you're not there. So it sends these alerts to your mobile device. By the way, I was making you preemptively take a drink uh, right. before I say one of our magic words. Uh, this is basically the lone thing on the show floor that is part of the Internet of Things movement that isn't stupid, because the Internet of Things is kind of stupid. <laughs> stupid or a little bit dull most of the time? That's kind of stupid. Like, the term Internet of Things means basically nothing. Right, right. I mean, you're talking about the actual idea that I can go home and my house is already putting my kettle on. That's cool. No, no, and, but see, here's the thing is, they're slapping a new term on what we used to call home automation. Right, or the internet. Of yeah, but all they've decided is that in addition to home automation, we're just going to slap an accelerometer on things, and therefore it is now the internet of things. It sounds a bit uh, like 2003. Yeah. When they were kind of like, you know, one day you'll be able to uh, do this with the internet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now we're here, and it's kind of, I'm already doing this stuff. I don't need a name for it. Just, like, give me the stuff. Yeah. So, so mostly Mother does slightly creepy things, as the name implies, uh, but it, it, it's very versatile. You can track a lot of different stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of different, you know, uh, sort of software solutions, and it's all relatively user-friendly, as user-friendly as this sort of stuff gets, which is not very. So you can slap one of these cookies on your kid's toothbrush and make your own smart toothbrush, which we'll talk about that later. Yeah. 
Um, you can put it in the kid's backpack and watch where they're going, know when they're home. Uh, you can visit their site and see a whole bunch of more uh, examples of this sort of stuff. But it, it, it's, you know, it's very interesting, it's quite powerful and relatively user-friendly, unlike all of the other Internet of Things stuff that we've seen, which is primarily built for, like, power users and hackers and tinkerers. It's right. not a cons they're not consumer products. This is a consumer product. Th this thing kind of looks ripe for customization as well, doesn't it? You say it looks like a Russian doll. You know, like, you should be able to get, like, I don't know, I'm going to a little Elvis mother, <laughs> you know, or... Yeah. or so you're, you're going to buy one and put costumes on it and paint it up? Yeah, or, or like, it's white and blank. You could draw on that stuff, right? You can get, get freaky with it. Joseph's just... Uh, you want to join us too, Joseph? No? You don't uh, want to be on everyone camera. Everyone, look at Joseph right now. That, that, that's Joseph Volpe over there, everybody. Um, all right, so all right, yeah. next. We actually have to speed things up a little bit. Do we? Bit, what think. time is it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we, got, we got 10 minutes, so let's blow through this. Yeah. Next up is the parrot jumping sumo robot. And uh, had a little bit of trouble picking which one of the parrot ones we were going to do. Right. Ultimately, we settled on this uh, one. I'm, I'm sumo. I'm team sumo. For You're sure. team sumo. Right. The other thing is really cool, but it looks like those wheels, I think, just more look like partly wheels, partly bumpers. Yeah. Like kind of so you can fly into the wall and it'll kind of roll down. But, you know, this thing jumps. Just, just to show how much of a doormat I am, this was my category to sort of man, and I personally liked the mini drone better, but bowed to your people's preference Bow for my superior. the sumo jumping bot. Either way, it's a robot, it has a camera, it's a toy, it's fun, you hit a button, it jumps up so you can cause havoc and scare your pets, which I'm pretty sure is all of these things are good for anyway. Especially mother. Yeah. Um, the True Grip keyboard, tell me about this, because this was added last minute last night, correct? As, I, as we were sort of wrapping this up? Yeah, but it is very unique. Basically, it is meant to provide a solution for typing on your phone. We all know that mobile on-screen keyboards are not the best, so you basically- you I don't know what you're talking about. I've never had any problem typing on a virtual keyboard ever. I would fight you, but I'm trying to be <laughs> quick about this. Okay, keep so, going. Basically, you dock your phone in, and you have this hardware device that is curved so it's comfortable to hold. It's supposed to be mobile enough that you take it around with you, and it maintains the QWERTY layout that your normal keyboard would have. It's kind of worth mentioning that this thing is approximately three times the size of the phone that you are housing within it. Yes. Representing a small drawback? Yeah, it's just a small one, but... Whatever. Uh, this is your category. This is the best kid-friendly product of CES. Yes, which is perfect for me because I am you a have so many single, kids. childless <laughs> person. But um, it is the Boohoo Dream Tab. This was actually made in a partner with Intel, Intel, a partnership with Intel. It has this partnership with DreamWorks also, so it has content made specifically for this tablet. It lets you learn how to draw, characters like Kung Fu Panda. Basically, it has some educational aspects to it that are pretty cool, yeah. along with a stylus so you can draw. Yeah, and, we, and we've seen plenty of these so-called kid-friendly tablets that basically the only thing that makes them kid-friendly is the content and apps they throw on it. But this is one of the few that I've ever seen where that content is actually compelling. Like, kids actually like Kung Fu Panda. Nobody cares about the random character some company made up and threw on their tablet. Right, but then there can be an educational tie-in tie yeah. there, too. Next. The next one, this is pretty cool and useful. The Colibri Smart Toothbrush. This is the happy fork of 2014. Yes, but more useful in the sense that, you know, maybe when you're young, you don't exactly know how you should be brushing your teeth, and this will monitor just how well you're getting certain areas. We'll let your parents keep tabs on that. Um, I'd argue, important. yeah, that this is actually more of a parent-friendly product. But yeah. we don't have a category for that, so... Next year. But right. it's, it's friendly <laughs> for kids in the long term. No one likes cavities, right? I mean... Well, okay, but you get a sticker. Um, Not for getting a cavity. Well, no, but <laughs> for getting it fixed after yeah. you've paid all that money. Mm. All right, lastly... All right. This is my best of show pick. I'm, yeah. I'm not serious, but this is amazing. <laughs> it's a I was hoping smart you were serious. onesie. It's called the Intel... Um, it's a partnership with Intel again, um, the Mimo Baby. It is a onesie with a sensor built in to give you information about your baby again. Their position, their body temperature. It's a smart onesie. I mean, that's I just amazing. Don't, don't get me wrong, it's a 
crazy, weird, awesome thing. But again, slightly creepy. Yeah. Well, what, what's even creepier is you compare it with a smart mug. You see that mug with all the yeah. LEDs on it, and you can kind of see your baby's, um, I was going to say, respiratory patterns. Respiratory? That's the one. Yeah. Um, patterns like He's on British. the mug. Sorry, yes. I, <laughs> I have to apologize for that. But yeah, so you can, the mug, you can drink in your coffee, and you can see the baby breathing. Okay. Let's move on really quick, because honestly, I think this category is the hardest to choose a winner from. And that's the best, uh, the, mo the maker-friendly one. So we've got the new 3D scanner from 3D Systems. Uh, they debuted a version of it at our expand show in New York. That needed to have a surface to attach it to. Well, it needed windows, which meant you needed to have a surface because nobody's connecting a 3D scanner to their PC that you have to hold in your hand with like a four foot USB cord. This one clips onto your iPad. People actually own iPads, therefore it is more useful. So that's got a pretty good, you know, argument. Yeah. But but 3D Systems also has the Chef Jet, which 3D prints food. Which I don't think we need to explain amazing. anything yeah. more than that. It prints chocolate and sugar. If you think that's stupid, you're a crazy person and get out of here. Yeah. Like that's I think we that's can move on, but yeah. it's very, very <laughs> cool. And then lastly is the MakerBot replicator, which is an, a sort of iterative product on last year's replicator, but it adds so much spit and polish to it that you can't ignore it. It's a beautiful piece of hardware. It's legitimately user friendly, which is basically the first time I think I can say that about a 3D printer. Um, and I've played with a number of them. Uh, it's, you know, it's not the most exciting necessarily, but personally I think it's the most compelling because it's user friendly, it's actually polished. It's something I would call, you know, market ready and you know compelling for a home user if it wasn't twenty seven hundred dollars yeah it's probably more <laughs> practical than the one that prints food yes it's because nobody's printing out chocolates in their kitchen probably no all day every day otherwise yeah. you need the toothbrush and then you know yeah but some good synergy that they should partner it's a good idea yeah all right best pc let's blow through this one really quick so we already talked about the razor project christine that's the modular concept very cool and by the way my pick for this category right for hands sure. down just look at it yeah uh, it's you can't look at it because you're <laughs> sitting over there and not looking at this laptop with us we'll invite you up afterwards it's fine um it's crazy and awesome the other ones are a little more um less significant in certain ways but the are, are very great products nonetheless samsung updated its achieve book nine this time it has a higher res screen. It also has very good audio, which yeah. for a laptop is definitely something to yeah. write home and about. And Dana in particular was yeah. very impressed by it. And, and that is saying something, you know, uh, my MacBook has decent audio. Yeah. My ThinkPad has horrible audio. But there's no. definitely like a glass ceiling. Yeah, for audio it, on all laptops. laptop audio is kind of not good. If that's that much more impressive, that's that's pretty great. Right, and then there's Lenovo, which you can speak to. Yeah, um, once again, it's another iterative thing. It's an update on the uh, Carbon X1. It's not drastically different, but you know, it does have a higher res screen. It's got an adaptive keyboard, but it's it's just such a beautiful machine. And uh, ThinkPad keyboards are second to none. Like right. they you can't beat them. You're, you're a ThinkPad. I am. Guy, I am. Right? I have a very strong ThinkPad bias. I will admit that whole very, uh, you know, upfront. Yeah. The thing about these things is that you might need a new laptop this year, and so these could be useful. He definitely They're not does. Exciting. I definitely need my my yeah. my seven-year-old ThinkPad that I've been using has overheated and shut down on me twice today. So and the lid is broken. Is hmm? How old is that? Seven years. Wow. Okay. I got that my second CES because my laptop that I owned died the week before. So yeah. Oh, okay. oh, that means I now know that it's been eight CESs in a row that I've done because my laptop is seven years old. <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out all day. And this last nice one, benchmark. should we be considering this a laptop or? No, it's oh, a this desktop. Is a PC category. Oh, okay, yes. okay, okay. It's the LG Chrome base. Um, LG brings the Chrome OS, which, as you know, is based on Google's browser, web browser, so it's a more simple OS. You can't do as much as you could with Windows 8 or Mac OS, but um, it's a 21.5 inch, all-in-one, basically. Um, 
I think it would be really good for using like in your kitchen where you maybe want to be looking at recipes, something like that. It's a nice all-in-one. I don't think it'll be too expensive. We don't have a price right. yet. That's, that's kind of the key, though, isn't yeah. it? It, yeah. It's the sort of thing that it would make sense for like a uh, a college's computer laboratory or a library, you know, where you might not want to do Chromebooks because they can walk relatively easily and right. you don't have to worry about viruses on these things. I, I mean, it's... I don't know if it's necessarily going to be a hugely compelling consumer product, but I think it certainly has its place, and it's you're you know, like maybe exciting. hotel lobbies and museums yeah. and stuff like right. that. Where there's like when we when we come back in 2015 and check into the residence in across the street, there's going to be a Chrome all-in-one sitting. Right, I can see this or education, uh, like lots of lobby action, like the various buildings where public access to the internet. Yeah. So just very limited applications, but good at what it does, yeah. which is internet-based. And, and that is it. That's it. That brings us to the end of the list. Um, thank you for bearing with us. That was a lot to get through. Um, thank you, James, for crashing. That's okay. Thank I saw you, you guys know. were way back over in the trailer like a couple of hours ago. Yeah. It seemed like, I don't know, maybe. It, it, it felt like decades. Yeah. It's been a long day. But as you've listened to all of this, please go to Engadget and cast your vote. We have a people's choice category, so you can pick your favorite of all these gadgets, and that will be awarded Mother. to the one. <laughs> Bias. And coming up next, we've got the mobile podcast, right? I believe so. I believe so? Okay. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, everybody. We're out of here. Yeah.